What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. A quick reminder, in a couple of hours here on this channel, we will be live streaming the PlayStation 5 event where Mark Cerny is gonna tell us all about the system and probably use a bunch of words that most people don't understand, but we're gonna do our best to make sense of what's going on there. So if you wanna watch that uh, with, with me on the channel here, if you're subscribed with like notifications on, it should alert you when I go live here. Looking to go live 20 minutes to half an hour before the event takes place at noon Eastern. So it should be pretty interesting to see what they have for us. Today though, I do wanna go over this wild report that's kind of being even called a report at, right now between Sony and Konami. And it's it's not even just the idea of bringing back Silent Hill. It goes much, much deeper than that. We're gonna go over what that is exactly and where that quote unquote report has now come from. And then also I wanna talk about Nintendo's indie event and what we saw there, some of the games to look out for, and then a big time demo that's going live today. And I'm not even talking about Resident Evil 3 that's out tomorrow. That demo, a different demo, and it's one you're definitely going to want to check out. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. If you're brand new here, hit the subscribe button down below. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed here. We have now passed 400,000 subscribers, and next up, I guess, is on to half a million didn't think I'd ever be saying that one. And today though, we are going to be starting with that PlayStation 5 event. There was a question I had in many others is, is this supposed to be a GDC event? Because that'll tell us kind of the direction we're gonna be going with this thing. Will it be more games oriented or more specs and technical details oriented? Well, according to PlayStation Japan, they kind of let it slip on Twitter that this was indeed set up as like a keynote kinda, for GDC. Originally, Mark Cerny was gonna show up there, talk about the PlayStation 5, some of the things that they are working towards and what they're doing with developers in mind, and that will, of course, in turn, give us an idea as to the direction of the system and what kind of sets it apart going into the next generation platforms with that next to the Series X. So, yeah, it's gonna be pretty technical, all right? And uh, I still think it'll be pretty fun and interesting to see what Mark Cerny has come up with here because he could go into this long spiel about how they made something like backwards compatibility work, could have some stuff with VR, even they'll definitely talk about how powerful the system is and any features possibly with the controller that developers can take advantage of. Either way though, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, so make sure you come on by New Eastern Time and we'll see what Sony has for us. Oh, and with all the stuff going on right now in the world, something we were expecting would be delays around games, and we've even talked about next-gen systems possibly being delayed into next year. We're kind of bracing for, for these things to happen at this point, right? Well, in it, the column in Famitsu for Masahiro Sakurai, he did talk about how he was supposed to meet with a publisher for the next Fighters Pass coming up, of course, that has six different fighters in it. However, that meeting was postponed indefinitely, as in they don't really even have any plans to reschedule right now, which, yeah, that would kind of throw a, a wrench into the situation here, the trying to get that all together. First off, that has to be madness just to figure that out, and now what's going on in the world and them having to reschedule, shuffle, and move stuff around, it's got to be even harder now. So Sakurai himself is, is saying that even the Smash Bro, just the Smash Brothers characters are having a hard time right now and being kind of pushed back, it seems delayed. And he goes on to say that he wouldn't be surprised if other games get delayed. But now I think about it, the only thing we know that's dated right now outside of well, even later on in the year is like Cyberpunk, right? So what else could get delayed? Like last, could Last of Us Part Two get delayed again? I don't know, I mean, May, May is already kinda coming up, but while we're on that topic, let's go into something else that's going on, which has to do with Final Fantasy VII and Amazon, as people started to receive uh, alerts through email that the date for the release of that game is like wiped clean right now on Amazon, and CAG even started to collect several tweets and questions, and it turns out right now Amazon is not is not getting in any new inventory into their warehouses unless it's considered essential, such as like medical supplies, for example, and video games don't really fall under that, right? So what you wanna do right now, check your order status for Final Fantasy VII Remake on Amazon if you ordered it there, and you may want to get it refunded or canceled and maybe go digital, or you can attempt to pick it up at like, I don't know, what would be a Walmart or Target? I mean, we're going into April here, so 
Hopefully uh, things start getting under control and stores start to kind of reopen by then, but uh, it's it's tough. I mean, digital, you know you'll at least get it day one. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start with that Indie Direct from Nintendo. It's about 20 minutes or so, and it, it definitely showed indie games specifically. Now, usually we expect indie games, but we've seen some pretty cool things show up here, like, like Cuphead, right, or Cadence of Hyrule. These were a lot of indie games that some people probably had not heard of, although some of these were some pretty big, like, new announcements, right? We had, like, Hello Games there, which was, that was interesting to see that pop up, but we'll go down the list of the different games, and I'll point some out to you guys that I thought was pretty cool. The big one that really got people excited was the ending, and that was a Shadow Drop, which was Exit the Gungeon. So, obviously, if you're a fan of Enter the Gungeon, you, you probably saw this and you said, wow, this is, this is pretty awesome to see this, because it was originally stuck on the Apple Arcade setup, and that was kind of frustrating for a lot of people to see that. Well, it is out today. You can go pick that one up, and it looked kind of fun. I didn't really get too into the, into the first one, but it is another game in the series for the fans. But starting through this direct, we had Blue Fire, which looked kind of neat. Actually, there was some platforming in there. I like the visual style, and it's kind of this fun little adventure game. I'll see a little more on that one. Then we had Baldo, which was this, this action-adventure RPG that had a bunch of puzzles. They kept saying it was going to take quite a while to get through, and I really liked the art style and just the overall direction of this game. That one will be this summer. Then they had... I Am Dead, that one is also launching uh, later this year. A lot of these are like timed exclusives for the Switch specifically, so they should show up on other places like Steam and PlayStation 4, for example. Then we had B Arc, uh, Cyanide and Happiness, had Freak Apocalypse, which is an interesting name for, for a game. Summer and Mara looked really, really cool. I, I liked at least the way that one looked. Kind of had this Harvest Moon feel to it, I guess is what you'd say. Quantum League did catch me off guard a bit. That is a, like a first person arena style shooter that apparently as you play through your past self will help you, it seemed. They were trying to explain it. I feel like that's a game I'll have to play, but I did like the way that one looked. And let's be honest, it, it, the more first person shooters we can get on the Switch, the, the better, I, I would say at this point. But I at least like the concept of what they were explaining of past and future selves kind of working together and, and helping you out in the arena. Then we had The Good Life launching on the Switch later this year. The Last Campfire is from Hello Games. And this is one that surprised me a little bit. I, I wasn't expecting Hello Games to be there, but I did like the look of this. It looked very, very high quality. Kind of had that that dungeon aesthetic to it where you're kind of going through on an adventure. I don't want to say like a Zelda game specifically, but it did have that feel of puzzles in like a dungeon where you kind of explore. So that one at least looked good and I thought the visual style was good as well. And then we had Pixel Junk Eden 2 that's going to be launching this summer. Eldest Souls, that one is also coming this summer. A lot of summer games, by the way. Sky Racket. Then we had moving out, and then we had a large sizzle reel, which included Blair Witch. That was that was an odd one to see pop up there. I remember that dropped on Game Pass uh, last uh, last year, I believe, and that was a that was a pretty big deal to see that pop up. A uh, Ghost of a Tale, Sky, Super Liminal, Wingspan, Dicey Dungeons, and then Bounty Battle. So I look back on this list of games here, and there's nothing that really jumps out. Like, there's no big name here. Like, Blair Witch might have been the name that people recognize the most. Exit the Gungeon was, was pretty cool to see that one pop up there. But otherwise, I looked through it and it was just, I thought it was a good Indie Direct because it was just all indie games that people hadn't necessarily heard of, which is great because that's kind of the idea of these is to shine a light on indie games that people just have never really seen to put those developers out there who are working really hard on some unique concepts and ideas. Overall, I'd say it was good. Uh, I'll put it there. It wasn't like mind-blowingly amazing, but it also wasn't, wasn't bad. It was a pretty decent overall indie presentation. And now, of course, people are looking forward to next week as one part of that, uh, that we'll say quote unquote leak rumor has taken place with the indie presentation now done. Does that mean that next week there is a full Nintendo Direct? Well, we'll see, but hey, at least we have a bunch of indie games to look forward to. Next up, let's talk about this wild, wild rumor. I'm going to say it's a rumor now, even though some places are calling it a report. I don't see it as that right now. I definitely see it as a rumor that is being thrown around as something that seems like it's going to happen. I, I don't know about this one, but 
What's taking place here right now is there is a supposed report out there that Sony is bidding on some big time IPs from Konami. When I say big, I mean Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania, and Silent Hill. Now, from what I can tell, because this has been kind of buried a little bit, the original source that I've seen is from 4chan. All right, and then Jack of All Controllers, which, all right, <laughs> comes out and says that they have sources for it as well. So here's what, here's what I will say right now. No, I don't think Sony is going to be able to buy those IPs, those intellectual properties from Konami, mostly because Konami can use those intellectual properties outside of gaming as they already have, right? Castlevania is on Netflix. They've taken Snake and jammed him into a pachinko machine. And we've even seen Silent Hill kind of make its way over to gambling as well. So no, I don't necessarily think that that will take place. What I think is going to happen, and I'll tell you now, I have been hearing more and more about this as I myself have started to kind of, we'll say investigate a bit, put some feelers out there. I do think Sony is looking to work with Konami when it comes to licensing games, and it sounds crazy, really sounds crazy, but they may be able to patch up the relationship somewhat for Kojima and Konami as, uh, as, the, as the middle the middle company, right? Like between them, like kind of keeping them apart, but basically they want to be able to use the IPs without necessarily buying them. Konami doesn't want to give them up, obviously, and they would then license them. So that's kind of where we are right now. This report of Sony wanting to buy them, sure, maybe they do want to buy them, but no, it doesn't It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. So if you see that thrown around as a report, think about it this way they would be, Sony is more or less looking to rent those IPs from Konami and Konami is looking to just cash in on the name since Sony would have to pay them just to use it. Just be careful with that report. It's very much a rumor right now. Don't get too overly excited. Let's, uh, let, let's get to the big PlayStation 5 reveal event later on today and then the really big one that should have games and everything later this year ahead of its launch before we start saying that Sony has like bought out Konami. Next up, we have a big demo dropping today. You may have already been playing it because I believe it launched in Japan like yesterday because of time zones and all of that. But in the US, you should be able to download Trials of Mana later on today. Yes, that is exciting stuff. There is a demo and this is Square who's been on kind of a roll with their demos recently, right? Dro dropping like a 10 hour Dragon Quest demo on us. This one probably won't be as long as it's the beginning of the game, but your save data carries over. Oh, that, that's great. I, I like these type of demos because basically it's you getting a head start on the game. It is frustrating, I think, when you play a demo and you spend a good bit of time on it and then you just kind of throw it away when the game comes out and sometimes play through what can be half an hour to an hour of the game, part of the game that you've already played in that demo. Like, this is great that Square does this and I, I kind of wish other developers did this as well, specifically. Oh, you play through the beginning of the game or at least give you a reward in the full game for doing stuff in the demo. Now, what's really cool about this is in the beginning, you get to kind of choose uh, your party combination. You get to pick who you want to play as and you will be able to do the, that in this demo. So look forward to that today. It's going to be launching the demo will on all the platforms that's coming out on all at the same time, it seems. So you can just go to different platforms that you have and see how it looks and runs. The Switch, PlayStation 4 and PC specifically on Steam, which was named. So fire up the system and keep an eye out for a trial of Mana demo later on today. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a couple of review scores that have come out now on Metacritic, specifically for Persona 5 Royal and Doom Eternal. Now, Persona 5, the newest one that's out later on this month, did very well. And I, I, am, I am not shocked. Persona 5 itself was very, very good, but it lacked PlayStation 4 Pro enhancements and the, some of the extra story that we're seeing in the Royal that's coming out, like I said, later on this month. It was already out in Japan previously, so we, we had an idea as to what to expect, but the Metacritic score for this one is a 96. Now, I do wonder if people who spent a hundred plus hours in Persona 5, the regular one, if they're gonna go back and play through what is a majority of it being the same game, right? But some extra content added in, if that's worth it to them. I think diehard fans will, but I do question how many people will go back and buy the entire game when you look at it and say, that eh, probably could have been a patch and expansion for a DLC price point. Yeah, but I, you, you can't argue with the results here with a 96 on Metacritic, 
fantastic game. I didn't really expect anything different. And then we had Doom Eternal, which is now at an 87. I think that's pretty good overall for Doom Eternal. As I read through some of the reviews, a lot of them said it was just a great time, tons of action as you'd expect. And there's a bit more, as, as they were saying, to kind of the story and just the world building and the adventure aspect of it as well. And you have, you have a grappling hook on your shotgun. Like, yeah, that's that's gonna be up there in the Metacritic rankings. You know what, I'm just ready for Friday. Let's just, let's, let's just jump to Friday already. Come on, we got Animal Crossing and Doom on the same day. Two games that ranked very, very well on Metacritic. Critics are absolutely loving these games. Let's just get there, can we? Just release them early. Let's do that now, okay? <laughs> that won't, I know that's like a thing right now. A lot of people are asking. That probably won't happen because of retailers who are instructed to sell it on Friday. I'm just ready for these games to come out. Like Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing on the same day. Jump into Doom for a bit, then jump into Animal Crossing and check that out. I think that's the plan. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This one is from Wesley saying, looks like they're revealing the Series X fast so then they can introduce the Lockhart. Okay, well, here is my thought with Lockhart because there has been more and more information coming out about it. It seems rumors and all this speculation. It does appear to exist. I'm trying to figure out now when they will reveal it. My thought, immediate thought now, is that they're going to re reveal it when the Series X price point is ready to be revealed because it will soften that blow. Let's say the Series X is flat out $600. That's gonna sting. Unless you have Lockhart that is $300 and they play the same games and they're both running, you know, SSDs and, oh, they can technically both do ray trace, all this stuff. Like, it's to the point where it just, one has a better resolution and maybe frame rate than the other. That would make a lot of people say, okay, well, 600 might be a bit much, but 300, I can deal with that. There's that middle ground. And I think they need that when they specifically do the Series X pricing. So, June-ish maybe? Look for Lockhart. And the latest gem I was gonna do here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Whether it is just Doom, Animal Crossing, Persona, what are you on right now? What are you picking up? Let me know about that one down below. I, like I said, I'm grabbing definitely Doom and Animal Crossing right away on Friday. We'll see about Persona. I, I'm not 100% sure if I need to play through that game Again, there's a lot of time spent there. And then what about the indie presentation by Nintendo? What did you really enjoy? And then Sony, Konami, it seems a little too crazy to me, but let me know about that as well down below. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you later on today at noon Eastern for the PlayStation 5 reveal event. I'll see you then.